Hello everybody, Flamin' Shark back with another video and today we're jumping in to episodes 2 to 4 of Overlord. That's right, we're getting in our first proper set of the series. Very excited for this. Should be a lot of fun. We met... You want me to run down the list? <laughs> we met Romanga, Alberto, Sebus, Mare, Aura, Shaltir, Kokaitis, Demiurge... Victim, well, we didn't meet Victim and we didn't meet Gargantua, but the, their names were brought up too, so I even have their names. We met a lot of fuckers. I don't know, I didn't write down the name, any of the mentioned uh, guild people's names at the beginning. I uh, don't know if they're going to be around or not, so we'll have to see. Um, but I did write the name of all of... Uh, the big servant, guardian, potatoes. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to see what we actually do now. Should be interesting. I was given tons of clarifications um, about just random shit that was kind of cool, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I uh, certainly did get quite the uh, uh, overload of Overlord uh, info once um, after I watched the episode and uh, conferred with my Overlord guide. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Should be interesting. Curious to see kind of what the day-to-day -day happenstance in the series are. Um, excited to hear the ED and OP a few more times. Uh, I know that there's an end credit scene at the end of this set. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything really to say. Episode one was pretty interesting, uh, but it's kind of one of those things where it's a classic episode in, 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 in any form of show, first episode that establishes what the series is going to be about. Um, but while it kind of did that, it still left things pretty open as to what it, it's really going to be about. And obviously one thing that I did kind of, um, I wouldn't say I missed per se, but I still liked the vibes of it was that there were, I, I felt like the way that it was, the way that the OP was portrayed gave off vibes of sticking around. But of course there was dialogue in episode one that, uh, seemed to think that he was, uh, considering that this is just the life he wants to live, which is, I mean, we'll see how that progresses. I'm curious to see how that progresses one way or the other, but you guys know I'm much more um, uh, intrigued with uh, an isekai narrative where the protagonist, uh, the isekai character, wants to actually return to their lives. Um, I think nowadays, especially with like the whole like wish fulfillment fantasy kind of um, deal, regardless of whether... <laughs> It's more of a, uh, of a of a dream or a nightmare. It seems like most characters uh, that are in this position nowadays in anime in particular tend to lean into the whole I would re this is better than the life that I once lived. And I like the idea of the desire of wanting to go home and and, and returning to your life, but then becoming attached to the people that you meet on your journey, which leads you to. I think a lot of intrigue towards when you're talking about the end of the series and the, and, and if you're going to do this type of story, one of the key points of the, the ending should be involving a potential for a decision where you have a one, ch you have one chance to go back or stay depending on, and you have to make that hard decision between, you know, the people that you, you knew in your old life and the people you've come to know in your new life. And, um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything like that in this show, but that's fine. Very curious to see what this is going to be about. I uh, don't think I have anything else to say, so we'll just check it out. It should be fun. I, 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 um, Momongo was pretty cool. Albedo, already love her. Uh, Sebus, very potato. The fact that is, again, the fact that his name, quote unquote, is Sebastian, but it's Sebus Tian is very funny. Um, Mari and Aura was a vibe. Shaltier seemed cool. 
And then, yeah, I mean, outside of that, I guess we'll just see what, what this show has in store for us. So, uh, probably, probably gonna get our first, uh, taste of, uh, any form of extensive battle, any, uh, extensive action, and I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how they play it. So, let's just jump into episode two of Overlord in three, two, one, and play. My, my. It appears I'm the first yep. to arrive. Shaltier. A true vampire. She guards the first So we're playing this part of the kind of back Lazarus. over. Um, oh, wow! Lord Momonga! The one man I could never rule above, my eternal beloved! Uh, hey! <laughs> Stop, Shaltier. You're starting to slobber on him. Ew. Hello, Half Pint. Damn. I didn't realize you were here. Damn, Savage. Having such a foolish older sister must be difficult, Mare. However, do you manage it? Miss Fake Tits. What? Oh! Like that. Got her. That's why you went through the trouble of using a gate. You were in a hurry, but since you overstuffed your top so much, you worried they would shift if you ran here. What the fuck? <laughs> Watch it out. You've got nothing but a boy chest. True, but I'm only 76 years old. Wow, I'm only developed. 76. Whereas you're stuck in an undead body. Maybe you should learn to accept those bug bites. How what dare the you? Fuck? I'll make sure you Talk about that. nostalgic. Shaltier's creator, Pararon Chino, and his older sister, Buku Buku Chakama, who created Aura those names. Mari, used to have fights like this all the time. Uh, Stop acting like children in front of the master! Kokaitis. There's Kokaitis, the yeah. Floor, and a virtual I, my note of him the was warrior. Big bug thing. I'll stop once this elf bitch pays for her life. Lovely. I love how I love how um Aura hit us with the uh vamp as if that was like a slur. I'm glad you're here, Kokaitis. I will always When I literally my call. note for Shaltier was Lolly Vamp. Mm. Good work. Sorry, everyone. I hope you weren't waiting too long. Demiurge, Demiurge yeah. He's an insanely powerful demon and guardian of the tomb's seventh floor. If Nazarek is ever in crisis, he is set to lead the other NPCs in its defense. And of course, Albedo. My lord, we the guardians pledge our fidelity. I mean, what else would you be pledging, am I right? Where's my soul indeed? It's like a fear I don't eat you, man. I know that. Get the howie out there with Mr. Weeds. I will say about this song. The singer sounds quite familiar. I feel like the singer has probably done an OP or an ED of something I've seen. I would just produce her. And people who are gonna challenge them, potentially? We'll have to see. Performed by OXT or O times T or OT. That could be pronounced a bunch of different ways. I'll just keep surviving in this room. Sorrow from what we lost comes throbbing forth again. Very epic shot. The the flag gives the me vibes of the first OP of Fairytale 2014, which I guess isn't the greatest sign, but I do like the uh, flag. Though magic can still be used, various rules have changed. Yeah. And the NPCs have begun to move of their own volition. It's basically a real world, isn't it? Raise your heads. Jeez, could I look any more depressed and hopeless? <laughs> I am very pleased that all of you have come. Oh, they're gonna come, all right. Are wasted on us. We have pledged ourselves I'm to, you turn and this live up. to obey, Lord. I fear that our abilities may not meet your expectations. Despite this, 
We will strive to meet them in honor of the lost supreme beings, our blessed creators. This we vow. This we vow. Interesting. The lost, referring to the Most other potatoes. Excellent, my guardians. I have no doubt that all of you will fulfill your duties without fail. Hell yeah. <laughs> Now then, actually, the situation outside 110? the great tomb of Nazareth is, at present, entirely unknown to us. With this in mind, I've had Sebus survey the surrounding area. Yeah, what's up, bro? Grasslands. Yes, Lord. I'm afraid the swamps that once surrounded the great tomb of Nazareth are nowhere to be seen. Furthermore, I cannot confirm a single building, human or monster, within one kilometer of here. It would seem we are completely isolated. Very good, Sebus. You've served me well. Interesting. As I suspected, it appears that Nazarek has been transported to an unknown land by equally mysterious means. Yeah. Floor Guardian Leader Alberto and Defensive Leader Demiurge, I have a task for you. All right. Yeah. Fortify our defenses and work on a way to strengthen our information gathering. The rest of you. Follow their lead. Follow it. Interesting. Is there any way to conceal the great tomb of Nazarek? Yes, though it will be difficult if all we use is magic. But if we covered the walls with dirt and vegetation, I think it would help to camouflage us from intruders. You want to smear the glorious Nazarek walls with dirt? Alberto, don't make needless remarks. Damn. Yes. Forgive me, Lord. Damn. I was Absolute careless. obedience, yeah. Are you confident the dirt will be sufficient, Mare? Yes, I am. As long as you allow it, of course. Except... Right. One round of mound would look unnatural. Sebus, are there any hills around the tomb we could blend in with? No. The area is barren. Nothing but flat lands as far as the eye can see. Mm. Fortunately, the land can be... Dude, I hate that this guy has the Sebus, the shadow yes. with one eye, just yes, giving me way too much of a Fuhrer King Bradley vibe. And that is what we shall do. Afterwards, we will use illusion magic to hide the open areas we cannot cover. Uh, of course, Lord. It will be done. Lastly, there is a question I would have each of you answer. First, shout here. In okay. your own words, tell me what kind of person I am to you. Beauty incarnate. Oh, Lord. There is nothing living or oh, dead that could ever compare with your radiant glow. Cocytus. A man whose strength is unrivaled by any guardian. You are truly worthy of ruling the great tomb of Nazarek, always and absolutely. Nice. Compassionate, and you're always three steps ahead of the game. Mare. You're the leader who's kind as well as merciful. Fucking twink. A man who makes wise decisions, then acts upon them efficiently and without any form of hesitation. Also, your enigmatic yeah, Albedo is just gonna impossible to predict. Tom, let's hear it, Albedo. We know it's beings, coming. And even though the other creators had left us behind, you mercifully stayed in Nazareth until the very end. And lastly, Alberto. You are oh, the Chris. highest ranking member of the Supreme Beings, our ultimate master and the oh ruler of Nazareth, as well as the man to whom my heart belongs. Uh, uh, yes, I see. I have heard your thoughts and given you your orders. Go work faithfully in my name. Lord! Of course. That's cool, just flipping out of existence like that. Why the hell do they have such glorious views of me? They're so... serious. Yeah, they mean it. And I mean... It only makes sense. I thought I was going to faint. That was so scary. Seriously, I was sure the pressure would crush us. To think he would be this amazing. <laughs> when he shows his true power and authority, he's even more glorious than I imagined. Indeed. Of course. He seemed pleased with our vow of fidelity. I hope that is the case. <laughs> he acted completely different when he was alone with Mari and me. In fact, he was super kind and gentle. Oh even my god. something to drink because he thought we were thirsty. Orgasm that or... just proves he's a true ruler through and through. His power and mercy make him amazing. <laughs> it's just as you say, Mare. Oh my god. Incredible, wasn't he? What the fuck? He our feelings and acted on them accordingly. Just as an absolute ruler should. What the fuck? Of the 41 supreme beings, he stands at the top. Of course. All of the others you fucking so. He mercifully stayed. I mean, she literally has. It, she's literally programmed it's into her very being. To so. my duties. It makes sense. I do not know where Lord Lamonga has gone within the tomb, but wherever he is, I should stay by his side. 
Very well. If anything happens, please inform me immediately, Sebes. Of course. Especially if Lord Momonga calls for me personally. I will rush to his side, no matter what <laughs> I have to sacrifice. But if Lord Momonga wants me to join him in his bedchamber, then I will need time to prepare. Lovely. I bathe first. Of course, if he wants me to go without bathing, then I'd be You've happy. made yourself clear. Jesus Christ, oh, girl. Excuse me, I must Holy take my shit. Leave. I already love her, no doubt. Is there something wrong, Shalti? Are you hurt? Ill? No, I'm fantastic. Just aroused? I just got a little overstimulated as all. Yeah, the she's... power was so intense, my underwear went through a small crisis. What the hell? Disgusting bitch! Whoa! What? Whoa! Don't pretend you aren't thrilled over the gift he just gave us. He shared so much of his power. If something that incredible doesn't make you wet, you must be <laughs> rancid beneath that ah! filthy parasite! <laughs> Yeah, I was literally about to say women in a nutshell. If it starts to get bloody, yeah, yeah. Or is like, uh, 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 is this really something worth fighting? I don't even look like a woman. Oh Jesus! Their vitriol aside, I'm quite interested to see the result of such a union. What? Wow. It would be a great addition to our forces, and it would pave the way for Nazarick's future. I'm not sure I follow you. Every great ruler needs an heir, don't they? Uh -huh. Wow, we're the really talking about behind this. behind until the end. However, one day, he may leave to join the other supreme beings wherever they went. Therefore, it would be nice if he left an heir we could pledge him loyalty to. Agreed. Um, so you're saying that one of them should be the first one of Momonga's heir? Oh my god, Last for me. If we do our jobs, they won't be needed. Yes, of course. But instead of just serving one lord, we could pledge Serve ourselves multiple. to line. Oh, damn. That would be kind of nice. That, that would oh, be kind would of be nice. Wonderful. What the fuck? I can see it so clearly now. I would be Uncle Kakaius. By the way, Uncle is there a particular reason you're wearing female garments? Actually, this is something that Buku Buku Chagama chose for me. Damn, I'm going back she to 115. She said I was a cross or something like that. Maybe wearing these clothes makes it easier for me to cast my magic spells? Hmm. cross -dressing. Interesting. Perhaps it would be fruitful to try having the males dress in female garments at some point. Oh my god. Later. Oh my god. Kokaitis, yes! Come back to yes! Us, please. I what want that. that I want to see you in a dress, Jimmy or Hell yeah. I'm happy Holy you're fuck. happy. I'm really debate, oh, struggling to decide how loud I want this spat. to be, but we're yeah, just gonna go with this. Oh yeah, it's gonna. We are deciding who the master's head wife will be. Head wife. Head wife. Will have multiple yeah, wives. they both it would understand be strange that. For someone of Lord Momonga's position and power, not to have a harem. <laughs> but only one of us can be his official have a wife. Harem. Yes, that's fascinating. But don't you? You're think all part of the harem. Gender assigned. Yes, of course. Back to work. But Shaltier, we will discuss this later at length. They will. Looking oh, I bet they will. Now then. It's time to begin planning. I mean, we don't know how much of it again is padded, but Shaltier's breasts uh, I only took on aren't class completely magician. out for it. But since I'm level 100, I should have enough strength to swing a sword. Let's see. Looks like I still can't wield or equip items that aren't specific to my endgame class. It's been three days since I came to this world, and I haven't once felt uneasy about my undead form. Mm. Maybe my mentality changed along with my body? I know that if I get emotionally unstable, some outside force makes me calm down. That bears investigation. I haven't felt the need to eat or sleep since I got here. Also, I didn't act on my libido. I guess that's another sword I won't be wielding. Aww. Shall I get that? Yes. Create greater item. It really is like Yggdrasil. Yep. If a magic item Everything allows works it, I can bypass my class restrictions. Narum, I'm going to go outside the tomb for a bit. I didn't catch Guard that name at all. Just say the word. No need. I will go alone. Please wait, Lord. 
If you leave without an escort, we would be unable to protect you. It is our sworn duty to act as your shields and perish. I won't allow it. There is something I want to do discreetly. My decision is made. As you wish, my lord. Damn. This is so tiring. I won't be able to use magic in this armor, but I can make do with my items. <sighs> Jealousy, avarice, and wrath? Why are the three demon generals under Demiurge on the first floor? Ugh. Demiurge. Nice. It's you, my lord. But why are you traveling without an armed escort? And wearing such armor? Crap! How'd he know? Calm down. Only someone wearing a guild ring can freely teleport around Nazarek. Of course he knew. Nice. Well, there is a reason for all of this. So that's how it is. Huh? As expected of a great ruler, your attention to detail is impeccable. Wait, what? I just wanted to go outside for some <laughs> air! <laughs> However, oh, I can't let you leave here without an escort. If something happened, I couldn't forgive myself. Hmm. Then I will allow you and you alone to accompany me. Thank you for indulging my selfishness, Lord. I will not fail. I really like him. Demiurge is just such a vibe. Reminds me of several different characters, to be honest, but the design, the personality, it's all just very much a vibe. Amazing. Yeah. I've never seen a night as clear as this before. Yeah, you're probably going to see a lot of those the out here. The artificial sky blue planet made on floor six was impressive, but it didn't hold a candle to this. It's a real sky. Fly! Ow! Oh, Jesus! That was cool. Everything with just the moon's light. I wish Blue Planet awesome. were here to see this world's unbelievable beauty. It's pretty beautiful. The stars in the sky glitter like jewels in a treasure box. I believe this world exists so that you may adorn yourself with its infinite riches, and we guardians exist to help you do so. It's possible. You could be right about that. Perhaps I was sent to this land to obtain those jewels for myself, along with every treasure that shines beneath them. But to hoard such things would be the height of selfishness. Instead, I could use them to adorn the great tomb, its residence, and my friends of Einzul Gome. If you wish it, we will use all the power of Nazarek to obtain it for you, my lord. <laughs> we don't even know what exists in this world. It's a little early for a quest. Yeah, maybe a little. Then again, maybe by the end of the set, think, the most enjoyable or a thing now might be taking over the world. <laughs> Who am I kidding? There's no way we'd pull that off. I wonder though, am I really the only player who came to this world you from are... Yggdrasil? Oh, you have- I mean, your name- didn't reach the show me. is called but Overlord, after all. might too far away, or the effect of the magic has changed. If that's the case, maybe I should spread the name of Einzul Gone throughout this world. Einzul Gone, huh? Your guild name will- The fuck is that? Oh, it's the dirt! That's Earth Surge. Yep. He's using a skill to increase his magic range, and one of his class skills to amplify the effect. Well done, Mare. Lord Momonga, may I ask what you plan to do? I want to thank Mare for his hard work. What do you think I should give him as a reward? I'm sure that he would be happy just to have you speak to him, my lord. Mm. Oh my god, that outfit is adorable. Why are you here? Oh no, did I make a mistake already? Not at all, Mare. The work you're doing is of the utmost importance. It will protect Nazarek from intruders and more. Uh, right. 
I wanted you to know just how satisfied I am. Your performance thus far has been exemplary. Um, Aww. thanks, Lord Momonga. I would like you to be this. That's a ring of Ein's wool gone! But only supreme beings are allowed to wear an item like this. I can't possibly accept. There's no need to panic, Mare. Huh? Moving between Nazarick's floors can be difficult. This will allow you to do so unimpeded and easily complete your work. Now, take this ring and serve Nazarick well. That's really Thank cool. You so it's very sized much, down. Monga. I'll be sure to work extra, extra hard for you in the honor of Nazarick. I swear it. I'll be worthy of this gift. I'm depending on you, Mare. Yes. Aww. By the way, my lord, I was wondering, why are you dressed like that? <laughs> um, well, that's... It's simple, Mare. What the fuck? <laughs> He's preparing for battle. <laughs> oh, battle. It's for our sake. He didn't want to bother any of us while we were working. It's like a disguise. If we knew that he was here watching us, we would stop working to praise him. If that what happened, the then nothing would get done. What the Isn't fuck? Isn't that right, Lord Momonga? As expected of Albedo, you knew exactly oh what my I was god. Thinking. Oh my god! I'm leader of the Floor Guardians, Total my lord. BS. Even without that title, this is a really I'm funny that I would sense character your thoughts dynamic. And feelings as if they were my with own. Is that so? <laughs> is there something wrong, Master? No, no, nothing at all. Right then, Mari. Sorry for interrupting you. You may return to your work now. Oh, sure. I'll get right on it, Lord. Please excuse me. <laughs> I'll better I'll notice. Some, I should give one notice to you as that well. Manga gave give me her one. a ring. Of what, Lord? The liar. This will make your work as administrator of the Guardians a little easier. Use it wisely. Thank you very much. <clears throat> oh my god, oh my god, she's getting way too turned on. I'm giving her a ring. I will prepare one for you another time. I understand, Lord. I only hope that one day I can prove myself worthy of such a treasure. Nice. I have done what I plan to do. I will return below before I cause any more distractions. Oh my god. Oh, yes! <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with these people? Oh my god! I'm here for it. We will attack the next village tomorrow morning. Oh shit, here we go. Guide the beasts to their cages. Guide the beasts to their cages, huh? So we have a human, or is it a kid to a human? This is Myth and Roy, isn't it? Give me your love and passion. Kill it, kill it. Is this? I'm actually doubting myself now on that front. Yeah! Yeah, I was Myth and Roy, okay. Love how it ends. Very... Almost gives me a little bit of Steins Gate vibes, that last part, visually, where it kind of, like, all goes staticky and stuff. I mean, it reminds me of a lot of things, but, you know. Okay, that was uh, episode two of Overlord. I feel like I didn't say a lot in that episode, but I did enjoy it. Um, pretty cool stuff. We got more of all the... We pretty much got more of everyone, which makes sense, because at the end of episode one, uh, Momonga gathered all the Guardians together, and we got to see some of them. We got more... Uh, we got 
Uh, we clearly have a rivalry and love dynamic between Alberto and Shouts here. They both want to be Momonga's head wife, his true wife of his harem, which... Oh my god, that was very funny to see the two of them uh, ready to uh, murder each other over that and <laughs> promising to have a nice long discussion later on about that was very cool. And then obviously the symbolism of um, Momonga giving Mare and Albedo the, the guild ring, um, the Einzolgon guild ring was very symbolic because it was only the supreme beings, obviously being the player characters that would have the guild rings and obviously they were just NPCs but obviously <laughs> all of that is out the window and this is a much different uh dynamic now that uh things got quite literally a lot more real um not a lot really nothing happened in this episode it was all just kind of more of a feeling out process for Momonga he's trying to kind of figure out where everything's going what what's going on with everything which that makes sense. I, I can certainly respect that. And I thought that was definitely uh, something that was very noticeable throughout this episode was that he was struggling with um, trying to figure out, you know, how, what are the rules? You know, what's... Um, oh, let me just real quick here. Okay. Just wanted to take a really quick note there. But um, just, just trying to uh, d decipher what the laws of this world are, what works... You know, what is the same compared to Idrisil and what is what works differently and all that stuff. And, and really trying to just gather his bearings, even though, um, you know, he's quickly getting the hang of it. And obviously his uh, his uh, guardians have such devotion to him that while internally, internally, he's just being like, well, that was dumb. But they always think the absolute highest of him. So they always see the absolute best. And because of that, there's been multiple uh, little comedic moments of them assuming that he's better and cooler than he really is, which uh, is very amusing. And obviously, I imagine, will be a running gag over the course of the series and should be quite amusing. Definitely looking forward to some of the situations that could come of that. I'm very excited to see more interactions between Shaltier and Albedo because the two of them are clearly going to, tr are going to uh, be very potato and I imagine have quite a few... Lovely moments for sure. And I really like Demiurge so far. Really loving his vibe. I think his design is really cool. Um, and I'm really liking him. The twins are fine. Mara and Aura are fine. Um, Kakaitis, we got so little of him. He he seems like a bit of a, a potato though. A bit on the, on the less intelligent side, which should be amusing. And Sebus is really cool, but again, so much of that's just based on the fact that I love his voice so much. Um, but definitely, like, impressionally, Albedo, Demiurge, and Shaltier probably, in that order probably, have left the biggest impression of the Guardians. Um, Albedo, for obvious reasons, being kind of clearly like the secondary main, the other main character. Uh, so got tons of sauce. Demiurge, I just love his design, love his vibe. And um, Shaltier, I think, is clearly going to be a potato for sure. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where things go. But that's kind of the th the kind of the three. I mean, obviously, Momonga has been really fun so far as far as, you know, adding him to the list. But I was kind of more specifically thinking of the other characters in the show. Anyways, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how uh, their dynamics will interact. And it looks like we're starting to get into the first plot narrative of the series with the ending of episode two. So we should be getting into some plot stuff in this set, which will be nice to get going with the story and actually get something going that, uh, will, um, lead to conflict and give us, you know, a fight sequence to the likelihood of it should be pretty cool. And, um, yeah, we'll be able to kind of get a little bit more of a feel as to what the more kind of normal run of Overlord's going to be like. So that'll be really cool. But anyways, let's jump in to episode three and see what it's all about. See if, um, see if we focus on this storyline with the humans and going to the next town and caging the beasts and, Maybe that's literal, maybe that's figurative, who knows. Given we're probably in some weird fantasy world, it's probably literal, but who knows. I'm just curious to see where, how this all goes down and what goes down. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into episode 
three. All right, let's jump into episode three of Overlord in three, two, one, and play. Yeah, this looks like some sort of armed force. Yeah. Knights of some kind, the village potentially. Is burning. Bunch of horse riding. Vice Chief, these people need help. Make sure they get back to Irantil safely. General Irantil? What is it? Something's wrong here. The King ordered us to track down and terminate the bandits that have been attacking villages, right? That's correct. Okay. Then why did they send us out here with only 50 soldiers? Especially when Baharuf might be responsible. It's a top secret operation. You know who's behind this. <clears throat> the noblemen want you to fail. If they can remove the king's most trusted general, then they would have a clear path to the throne. It's so transparent. That's enough, Vice Chief. But sir, you know I'm telling the truth. We're walking straight into a trap. Our forces should head back to Irantel as fast as possible. If we split up now, it will only weaken us. A few villages may be lost. Mm. That is a small price to pay in order to keep the most powerful swordsman in the country alive. I think he disagrees. I was born a commoner. So was I. I know what it's like to live in these villages. To fear monsters at every turn. Mm. Always waiting for death. Same yep. here. Then you know what it's like to have hope, praying that someone out there would actually show up to protect you. Mm. Of course, and that's what you swore to be. Arrive. And that's but what you yeah, plan to be. One person ever came. Then let us be the ones who do show up. <laughs> we'll let these people know that it's okay to have hope. Huh. That prayers are answered. Nice. That heroes exist. For that very reason, you came. You became again. Became what you are in the first place. Where's my soul indeed? I'm wondering, narratively, if he's gonna slowly become more and more Momanga, for lack of a better term. You know what I mean, like, he's gonna grow into it more. Obviously, he's gonna grow into the role more, but he's gonna actually become less human. And more over and, and one of the narratives that the show is going to one of the narratives that the show is going to play on is the idea of humanity and our protagonist losing his humanity and becoming something else entirely. Platanoia is such a great name for this song, but it's just got such a cool ring to it. I can't wait to see all of them do their things. Can't wait to see her in that outfit. And of course, there the boy with the flag. Which I assume is the symbol of, um, Einzelbaum. Battle of Carne Village. I assume it's Carne. Hmm. All right, what's? I just need to figure out how to work this mirror of remote viewing. Then we can really secure the surrounding area of Nazarek. Oh. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, my lord. I knew you'd do it. Thank you, Sebus. I appreciate your support. Of course. That is my duty as your personal butler. The sole reason I was created by... Bro, the I can't to get over your orders, the no fact that this, this might see. fucker has Very one well. eye. Let's see what's happening. Whether he actually does have one eye or not, the fact that he always has a shadow on one eye is such a meme. Yeah, the name a town VA. festival? Not quite. No, definitely not. Yeah. 
Yikes. Death! Jesus, yeah, that's a lot of blood. Those men don't appear to be bandits. No, they look to be of some crown. I appreciate the I appreciate a lot of blood there. That's pretty violent. What's up with me? How can I watch this violence so calmly? I would have passed out at the mere sight of it in the real world. And that's part of you being the overlord over there. What are your orders? Leave them be. I see no good reason to interfere in their affairs. As you wish, my lord. Touch me? What an easy encounter! Wow. Just two more XP and I get to level up! Then stop goofing around and kill what him the already. Fuck? Damn inhuman. I'll fix his mug. Huh? What the fuck? Why did you save me? Wow. Because saving a person who's in trouble is always the right thing to do! <laughs> oh my god, the freaking Kaji flying on the screen. That's like when you first played the game. <laughs> I guess that now's as good a time as any to test my strength in this new world. I'd have to do it eventually anyway. Fair enough. Cerbis, I'm paying them a visit. Raise the security level of Nazari to maximum while I'm away. Tell Alberto to meet me there, armed with oh, a Oh shit. Oh shit. Prepare the reserves. Oh shit. I want soldiers who are skilled at stealth or can use the invisibility spell ready to move in at a moment's notice. Consider it done. Oh shit! I strive to live by your example. Oh, Beto and Momonga. <laughs> the fact that the dude's name was Touch Me. Oh my Get god. Albedo and Momonga about to go into battle. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Don't look. Uh, run, Henry, quickly! Take uh... cover. Now, get away from here. I have to find a way to save my little sister. Little do you know what's in front of you. What is that? Uh. Yeah, the Overlord's here, uh. and his bitch is probably not far behind. Grasp hot. What the fuck? <laughs> Well, that's a relief. I was afraid that ninth tier and dead spell wasn't going to work on these humans, and I'd have to ninth retreat. Tier and dead I could always huh? use my melee armor, but I'd like to save it for another day. It's a monster! Hmm. I felt nothing after killing that soldier. Interesting. Very it interesting, as if I isn't being it? Human in both a physical yep. and a mental capacity. Yep, I'm so curious to see how that evolves. Kind of he thinks like a human children, still, for the most part. Well, I'm here now. You'll help me test my power whether you want to or not. Dragon Lightning! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that running animation was really funny. Pathetic, and that was only a weak fifth tier spell. Let's try making an undead. Death Knight! Whoa, it's taking over a dead body? It didn't work like that in Yggdrasil. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Getting nice and big, too. Oh my god! <laughs> Kill anyone in the village who looks like this. It's gonna be a big CG soldier. Oh god. It's like the one thing I kind of know about Overlord is apparent, it, it, from my understanding, yeah, there's going to be a lot of think CG. I through from now on. What's the point of summoning a defensive monster if I'm just going to send him away? Oh shit, oh shit, Albedo's combat took armor? longer than expected to get here. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to wait. Oh, that's hot. Don't apologize. You arrived right on time, Albedo. Thank you for saying so. Now then, how would you like me to deal with these pathetic lower life forms? These two are no threat. The humans wearing the armor are the enemies we are after. I understand. It looks like you're bleeding. 
Drink this. Blood? It does look like blood, doesn't it? If you insist, I'll drink it for my- No, don't do it on me! What the hell is going on? Did they forget I just saved their lives? Well, yeah, you trust me. Do you realize it? Dare you insult your savior! Alberto, don't! Lower your weapon at once! Damn. Yes, yes, master. My lord. Yep. This is not blood. It's a healing potion. Damn. Just like that, you're fine. Yep. I assume the pain is gone now? Yes, it is. Yep. Hmm. Tell me, have you ever heard of magic before? Uh, yes. I have a friend who frequents our village. He's a pharmacist who practices magic. Pharmacist, huh? Okay. Then it's not hard to understand. I am a magical caster as well. Anti-life cocoon. Protection from arrows wall. I just cast two protection spells around you. You'll both be safe as long as you stay put. But just in case, take these as well. If you blow the horns, an army of goblins will appear to do your bidding. What the fuck? Do not hesitate to use them if needed. Jesus Christ. Who are Thank you? Thank you so much for saving us. We are forever grateful. Thank you very much, mister. It was no problem. Uh, wait, may I please have the name of the man who saved me? My name? Yes. Yep. They should all know. Oh, whoa! Shall remember that it was a moment! And tell everyone that of my powers. Momanga. I am Einzul Gon. Einzul Gon. Oh, okay. going by going by the name of the guild. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> It's very specifically, I think they've already noticed it's only going after the soldiers. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Let's also remember, this is a soldier that specializes in defense. But one undead that specializes in defense can murder a whole, whole, whole group of people. Wow. Not just a meme. Jesus! Just slice that head right off. Enjoying it. God help us all. We're doomed. You idiots! Hurry up and take down that monster! <clears throat> this can't be happening. I'm too rich to die in a <laughs> hole like this. <laughs> you men, get over here now! Be my shield so I can escape! Stand your ground, Bellius. <laughs> Protect me! I have money! I'll give you 200 gold pieces! No, make that 500 gold! Wow, ah! wow, trying to buy Start. protection. I'll pay a thousand! <laughs> oh, lovely, a little undead! Bro literally just passed out, what the fuck? And then he died. Don't Great guys! How are you still alive that long? What the hell? Money! Money! Take some. How in the world did he survive that long? Jesus. No, Getting repeatedly no, I, I can't do it! Screw this! Hold steady! <laughs> Stay strong! We will stand our ground and defend our brothers! Let's give the archers time to retreat! Prepare for battle! <laughs> Are they about to just run for the hills? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you're dead. And your head's gone. And the rest are gonna run now. After watching their captain, their leader, or whatever. You've served me well. Holy shit, I can't get over it. Oh my god, that mask. What the fuck? Also, this RST! My name is Einzel Go. It is a pleasure to meet all of you. Don't worry about my death knight. No harm will come to you now. Tell your supervisor, I mean owner, of my kindness. However, next time you commit such heinous acts in this area, I will bring death to your entire kingdom. 
Jesus Please, Christ. Make sure you speak my name to everyone. Yeah. <sighs> acting is a tough gig. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. You won't be acting for long. Why did you come here? I could not stand by and watch innocent people be murdered. Call it a moral obligation. Be at ease. This village is under my protection. You no longer need to be scared. Damn. I don't do this kind of work for free, though. I expect to be compensated for my efforts. They can understand that! <laughs> as I thought, the villagers don't question my intentions as long as they think I'm doing this for financial gain. They would react negatively if they saw my real face, even yeah. though it was common in Yggdrasil. Mm. It's too bad I didn't think of concealing it before stepping into this situation. It's a pain, but I'll have to use a spell to keep those girls quiet. Damn. Here's hoping memory wiping magic works in this place. Oh, Lord. I mean, so far, your magic... I requested money from the village, so as not to arouse any suspicions. But information was what I was truly after. Okay. I am unfamiliar with this new world and need to learn all I can about the area. Failing to educate myself will only make me weak to any enemies. The village chief and his wife believe my story about Pinga Hermit who was quite knowledgeable about magic, but who knew nothing of the world around him. Mm. They were eager to educate me about this village and the surrounding areas. I wonder though... What kind of people use magic in this world that these peasants would so easily trust me? Interesting, yeah, Even though how rare is, is it by how... this cursed mask, they drop their guard just because they claim to be a magic caster. As yeah, interesting. In Israel, even noobs could get this mask by staying logged in over Christmas Eve. Wow. Sadly, I quickly learned that all of my Yggdrasil currency was useless here. Of course, the gold itself has some value, but it could be dangerous to flash the coins around. After that, I asked about the surrounding territories. There are three realms. Nazarene in this village known as Khan are part of the Riestes Kingdom border. Riestes Kingdom. On the other side of a lot of stuff I should probably write. Oh, is that the logo of the south, flag? The Baharuth Empire. Very cool. The two countries are on bad terms to say the least. They've hated each other for years and they often battle on the open plains between them near the capital city in Irantel. There is one final country, the Slain Theocracy. Which is located to the south of both provinces. Slain, huh? Interesting. The village assumed the Baharuth Empire was responsible for the attack based on the crests of the Night Shields. However, there's a possibility that the Slain Theocracy staged this event to maintain hostilities between Riestes and Baharuth. If I had thought to take a knight hostage for questioning, we would have found out for sure who was responsible. Is there something bothering you? No. And he thought about all that really quickly? Is there anything else of importance that I should know about this region? Let's see. The closest city to our village is the capital, Erantel. Goblins, orcs, and ogres inhabit the area, but you should be safe if you stay on the road. The adventurers hunt on that land and do a good job of keeping those bastards' populations in check. Adventurers? They're mercenaries who deal with monsters mm. in exchange for payment. Makes if sense. If you're interested in hiring some of them, there's a guild in Erantel where you can request their services. An adventurer's guild? And just how big of a city is Erantel? I'm not sure. Definitely larger than our village. I suspected that. If I want to find out more, I'll have to make a home for myself in the capital. Interesting. I could use my wand of resurrection. It would breathe life back into the dead villagers. However, these people may not be as trusting of a magic user who's as good at reversing death as he is at bringing it. I can only yeah. imagine how much trouble I'd get myself into if then I Then you're starting to look like a fucking god and, and then, well, now I'm yeah. Bring myself. A little too much attention. The fact that I saved their village. Poor girls, though. Thanks to my good deed, the story of how Einzel Gone saved Karn Village Bro. spread across the countryside. Fuck it. My reputation should grow quickly. Albedo's armor and if there are is other players from Yggdrasil stuck in this world, then they will hopefully hear of me and seek me out. I shouldn't kill any more humans. That would be really necessary. cool. I wouldn't want to antagonize any players. Also, a man with a reputation needs a cause. One that would allow me to win the support of one of the countries. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Today's mission was a great success. 
Let's head back home, Alberto. Right away, my lord. Hey there. You seem to dislike humans. What's to like about them? <laughs> They're weak and pathetic. Just oh. tiny insects that exist to be She's crushed such a dommy mommy about anybody Listen, but her lord. I want you to show them respect. Lord. Act if you need to. But I demand that you treat the humans with kindness. It feels hypocritical to ask that of her when I don't have feelings for them either. It must be a side effect from being an undead. Hmm. What are we going to do, Chief? I'm afraid I don't have a plan. The problems keep stacking up. Village Chief, is there something wrong here? Lord Ains, thank goodness. I was just told there are more soldiers heading toward the village at breakneck speed. Is that so? Don't worry, I can handle this situation. Please gather the surviving villagers around your house. When you're done, come meet me at the town square. Yes, of course. All right. All right, let's see it. I'm down. This will be interesting. Yeah, I killed all of them. I am the chief royal warrior from the Riestes kingdom, Gazef Stronov. The king has ordered me to hunt down the knights that have been attacking surrounding villages. Your people are safe now. We will do all we can to uh, protect you. Thank you, General Gazef. Are you the chief of this village? Who is this man standing beside you? He looks peculiar. This gentleman no said... No need to worry about that now. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, General. My name is Einzul Gohn. I'm a simple magic user who stumbled upon this town while it was being ransacked by those knights. What? <sighs> These people would have been lost without you. Thank you, yep. Sir Ains. <laughs> General! We've spotted a large army of unknown origin and they're surrounding the village even as we speak. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, we're about to get to see El Beto and... And the Ains do their thing. I'm probably gonna. Now I don't know what to call him. Because he's actually going by the Ains old grown name. Very interesting. Probably still gonna call him a manga, but you know. Very cool. Here we go. Don't wanna cry. Very cool art. I really like the art in this CD. It's very uh, stylistic and a very. Uh, it's a vibe that I think fits on Beto very well. Oh, you would kill anything for your love. That I'm very confident about. I mean, that is your thing. God, some of that English is so, it's such a, it's the, the Japanese English. Very classic, where, it, like, it, it barely makes sense, and I'm, oh, I am, I am here for it, though. Um, both of the, the OP and the ED, especially the ED, but both of those songs use a fair bit of English, which I'm usually a little opposed to, but... I do really like the OP and the ED a lot. Um, they are very cool. I don't know if, again, I don't... The ED is weird, because I, I Myth and Roy do a lot of anime themes. And I feel like they've had... Like, it's not definitely not my favorite Myth and Roy song, as far as the ED goes. But it's it's good. It's good. Uh, it's a weird one, though. I feel like... I feel like it's... it's um, It feels like it's trying a little too hard, I feel like. But, yeah... That was episode three of Overlord, probably the best episode so far as it kind of started to really get us into the show and really get us into a, a, a plot because so far it was just 
setting up the concept and introducing us to the main potatoes that we're going to be worried about. But in this episode, we actually were introduced to more of a storyline, more of a plot, uh, a situation between the kingdoms and Momonga trying to find himself amidst all of this. And it's really interesting and it's really cool to see, um, really cool to see where that goes. And I'm definitely excited for that. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how that all plays out because there's definitely, there's definitely a lot going on that I think, um, will be interesting to see how it progresses. Cause obviously next episode, we're going to get the big fight. We need all these soldiers and we're going to get to see what the, the swordsman is made of. And we're also, of course, going to get to really see more of Albedo and Momonga doing their shit and really showing off and showing out, which will be really fun to kind of see more of a broad uh, demonstration of their abilities and just the various shit that they can do. That'll be really cool, and I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, this episode was a bit more serious. It was obvious, compared to episode two, obviously we had, you know, a village getting... Um, you know, uh, getting a, murder, a bunch of villagers getting murdered and just the village getting fucked up. And, of course, uh, Ainz or Momonga went to save the day, and that was really cool. I think for consistency's sake, I'm just going to refer to him as Momonga. But if I, if, I, if, I refer, if I do refer to him as Ainz, it'll be obvious when I'm talking about the, the guild versus the overlord boy. Uh, I, should, well, I, I imagine it'll be quite clear. I'm definitely looking forward to it, though. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. This will be a fun uh, fun way to end the set. I think with a what looks like it is shaping up to be a decent sized battle on our hands. That'll certainly um, reverberate shockwaves through um, at least the local regions as far as you know this big battle where the you know the legend of Einzul Gon will start to spread across the world after the events of what's about to happen in episode four, I'm sure, and that'll be pretty fun. So, good stuff, good stuff. I like that episode. Pretty good. Solid episode. Uh, not, again, not a ton to talk about, but we are starting to get ourselves into a conflict. Again, we're probably going to resolve the conflict next episode, but that's going to build onto itself, and that's going to build us into bigger situations down the line, which I'm definitely looking forward to. So I'm sure that'll be really fun. So anyways, let us... I think? That's all I have to say. Also, um, I know I said it a few times, the reaction. Alberto's armor. Mwah. Oh, shit, that was... That's... Mwah. Just... Chef's kiss, for sure. Very interesting, though, because this episode really did start to further generate, um, or not generate, demonstrate his um, his mental changes. The fact that he easily can stomach death now. The fact that he doesn't really care about the humans now. Like, the fact that he's mentally changing to be more like the overlord. Um and that's and that's very interesting, and I think they can do some cool stuff with him losing his humanity. I hope that's an angle of the series goes and really tackles the idea and maybe even have somewhat of an identity crisis as he becomes less and less human and more and more something more. Um, and I think that's a very interesting thing, whether it's done figuratively like it's done it's done obviously in many series it's done figuratively and this it would be a more much more literal interpretation but i still think it would be a very interesting thing to explore in this series and i think specifically from the literal context of literally not being human and how that mentally changes you um as a person you know, person quote unquote would be very interesting i think that's a dynamic that i would love to see overlord explore with momonga's character arc so fingers crossed that we get some of that but definitely excited for more so let's jump into episode four of overlord Alrighty, let's jump into episode four of overlord in three two one and Play. Ungrid Luwin, as captain of the Sunlit Scripture, one of the six scriptures of the six great gods, oh, you are called Lord. upon to serve with honor. 
You will go to the Riestes Kingdom. Locate Gazef Stronoff and eliminate him. Ah, lovely. This treasure contains a miracle of the gods. Use it only if necessary. Attention all units. Our prey has entered the cage. Devote uh, yourself to the gods and carry out their will. Oh, that quote was a little... Jesus Christ. That quote was a little... Almost reminded me a little bit of... Just a little bit. Not as cool, though. Damn, that transition, though. Woo! Can't wait to see more of uh, Shout here. There's some good teases in here. That last girl they show gives me vibes of Krush from um, ReZero a little bit. Her design and kind of her just general looking vibe. The singer for this song sounds familiar too. Misery world indeed. Ruler of death, okay. There they are. It looks like they've surrounded us in equal intervals. Do you have some idea of who they are? Only the slain theocracy could send out this many magic casters at once. And they're part of a special ops unit directly under the head priest. It must be one of the six scriptures. And the men who attacked the village earlier? Theocracy soldiers, no doubt. Looks like they dressed in Imperial armor to throw us off. As I thought. Does this village hold some significant value? If you don't know why they're attacking, then I'm assuming they're not after you. Which means one thing. It would appear that you are quite despised, Chief Warrior. Yikes. Indeed. Well, lucky me. To think. Even the slain theocracy wants me dead. But these yeah, I really creatures want to look see like him Archangel fight. Flames. Why is a monster from Yggdrasil here? Interesting. Sir Eines. Mm. I would like to hire you. Name your price and I'll make sure you get it. Sorry, but I have to decline. Very well. Then please take care and thanks again. This village owes no, you gratitude. No, he's declining do because he doesn't want any money. I am grateful, which is why I hesitate to ask. I know this is a selfish request. Please grant these people your protection one more time. I have nothing to offer you now, but I beg you, please. There is no need for you to go that far, Gazif. I understand. I will be sure to protect the villagers. I will even put the name of Ainz Ulgon on the line. Then I will have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Instead, nice. I will focus on the task before me. Take this. I insist. <gasps> You're giving me a gift? I gratefully accept it. Interesting. Thanks. Good luck. <laughs> Interesting. So he's gonna watch. When I first met the humans here, I saw them as no more than insects, as you do. But the more I speak with them, the fonder I grow, like a child among helpless animals. Is that the reason you were willing to promise the honor of your great name to his request, my lord? Perhaps. Lord Eines! <laughs> but he still Those sees them are as... still out there. Why is the chief warrior leaving? Because he was their true target, not the village. Then should we just stay here and wait for him to deal with those brigands? That would be unwise. Once the chief warrior and his men disrupt their lines, we will make our escape. He will cause as much commotion as he can to make a clear path for us. 
Interesting. We'll attack them head on. Break through the soldiers. Yeah, let's see what and this guy can do. Away from the I wanna I wanna see this After boy. That, continue to retreat. Timing is crucial here. Understood, sir. Now then, let's paint He's the got ground with their god-loving guts. <laughs> let's paint the ground with their god-loving guts. That's gotta be the best quote of the series so far, and we've had and we've had a, a literal bitch fight of words already. Animation's not bad. Not great, but not bad. Damn. Oh, but he's got so much strength, he can still kind of throw it to the ground. Tough, aren't you? Yeah, those, that thing looks very mechanical looking. Oh. That'll do it. Very nice. Okay. Magic really pisses me off. I bet. All right. It's done. This is all according to plan. It's up to you, Sir Ains. I told you to retreat! What are you doing coming back for me? You're all damn fools. Hmm. But you're fools I'm proud to fight beside. Aww. <laughs> yeah, they were ready for that. Yikes. Okay, yeah, this animation is not that great. Take us. <laughs> it's fine though. I've seen worse, for sure. You take out their commander, it's all over! Come on! You're in my way! Martial arts, six-fold slash of light! Nice. Martial arts, instant counter! Flow! Okay. That's such a weird one. Such a you see that? We can win. Oh my God! You see that? <laughs> a country bumpkin. Mastering that many skills isn't easy. Sadly, it won't save you. Summon another set of angels. Focus all of your magical attacks on the chief warrior. We're in trouble. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Meanwhile, with Ainz and the villagers. I'm <laughs> it's all right. Trust me. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! They're wearing it down, chipping away at his. Uh, I I, I want to say chipping away his HP just because of the. I mean, obviously this is an Idris sale, but. Damn, damn! That's a little more than chipping away. He's about to get that. Finish him off. All the angels but are gonna all stab at once. Are we gonna get an iron sighting at the last second? Albedo, what's gonna happen here? Or is he just. Oh god. Bro, bro, like, I'm berserk! My name's good! No, I'm just kidding. If only. Chief warrior. Had that energy, My though. My heart and soul belong to Riestes. I'll die a thousand times before I lose to the likes of you. Yes, you will die, and you'll only have your blasphemy tongue to blame for it. Face it, Gaz has strown off. There's nothing you can do to stop us. Once we're through with you, we'll massacre the villagers. Cease your futile resistance and just lie down like a good dog. As an act of mercy, I'll make sure your death is painless. <laughs> is something amusing? Yeah, you and your little army. When the man in the village comes for you, it will be a massacre. Trying to bluff me? No, not Kill really. Angels. Make sure he suffers. <laughs> I mean, you might think like it's time for us to switch. Holy shit. Huh? Where am I? This is the village storage house. Lord Ein set up a magical barrier to keep us all safe. <clears throat> is he here? He was. 
but he just vanished right in front of our eyes. Then you appeared in his place. Yeah, he switched places. Yep, he told you that. Uh. Yo! I'll be. <laughs> Yo! Okay, so that's how they set it up. Holy fuck. Holy fuck, I'm hyped. Let's see it. Just who are you? Nice to meet you, people of the slave theocracy. My name is Ainz Ulgo. But please, call me Ainz. <laughs> call me Ainz, end of episode. That would have been funny. But nah, it looks like we're gonna get this fight. I have something of a relationship with those villagers. Have you come to beg for their lives or just your own? No, no. You misunderstand. Mm -hmm. I overheard your conversation with the chief warrior. You really have a lot of balls, don't you? Huh? I spent my precious time and energy saving those people, and you brazenly declared your intent to massacre them. Wow. I can't imagine anything more offensive. Oh You're being shit. Rather brazen yourself. Here we go. A magic caster. So, what do you plan to do? Offer your pitiful life to me without resistance. Do this and there will be no pain. However, if you refuse, Holy I shit. swear here and now. You will die painfully and in despair for your imprudence. <laughs> Have the angels attack this fool! Oh, it's like a new shit. Yeah, no reaction. No Is reaction for Valmetto. I expected more after a bluff like that. Did you not hear me? I said to offer your life without resistance. By the time I'm through with you, you'll wish you had listened. A trick! Yes, it has to be! Oh my god, those voices are right physical now. nullification. It's a passive skill that completely nullifies the physical attacks of low-leveled weapons and monsters. Wow! <laughs> wow, low-level, by the way. As I thought, they really are the Archangel Flames made to sin. The fact that you can use magic and summon spells from Ectrasil intrigues me. I want to know why they exist here and how you could have learned them. But for now, I'll focus on killing you. It's my turn. You wanted a massacre. You'll get one. <laughs> Don't just stand there! Attack him! Hurry! Oh Open shit, Master. Lord. Yeah, it's like I want to get it. Megalith or Megalith? I assume Megalith. I don't even know if that's what he said. Megalith first? Oh, it's possible. It comes for you, it will be a massacre. <laughs> yep, he did say that. <laughs> yep. When they all get their spells ready. Hmm. It would seem they know more Yggdrasil spells than I initially thought. Tell me, where did you learn that magic? <laughs> What just happened? Alberto, you're well aware that these pitiful low-level spells would have done me no harm. There was no need for you to interfere. I beg your pardon, Lord Ainz. But if someone wishes to fight a supreme being such as you, they should at least be able to best me. These wow. men are mere pebbles fighting a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid they wouldn't meet your requirements in ten lifetimes. <laughs> no. Nice. Principality of Observation! Attack! Principality of Observation? That's a really cool name, but something tells me you're gonna be child's play too. Just because you're a better archangel thing. Yeah. Exactly. My, my. I guess I should fight back. He is the most powerful Hopefully. character in this universe in all likelihood. That was one hit! Yep. That's impossible. There's no way a high-level angel could be destroyed using only one spell. Captain Nikun, sir, what should we do now? <laughs> we'll summon the highest level angel. Is that? That's something you've seen before. Based on how it glows, it's a sealing crystal that can hold any magic other yep. than top-tier spells. Yep. So they even have Yggdrasil items. Nice. Oh, better. I believe your skills may be required. Understood. Behold, 
the shining form of the highest of angels. All right. Dominion authority. Dominion authority, huh? Cool theme. Something tells me. Something tells me you're about to get absolutely wrecked, though, by uh, Alberto. Wait, you're telling me this is your strongest Trump card? <laughs> That's like, right. Wow, this is a weak fuck. I didn't think I'd have to call on it, but you proved worthy of its divine greatness. <laughs> I am at a complete loss for words. Regretting your folly? No, regretting how shit you are. This is stupid. What? I can't believe I put up my guard for this sort of child's play. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> you can't be serious. No way. You're <laughs> lying. Mankind can't compete with its might. I'll show you. Oh, I'm going to shatter you, power. shitty little religion. And whatever shitty magic this is. is oh, the God. Of seventh tier magic. Nothing can survive it. Now receive the God's judgment and repent. It's not going to leave a scratch. It might mess up his mask. <laughs> so this is how it feels Nothing. to take damage. This is pain. Oh, and he's 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 into it. You lower my That's my love. My oh love my God! Beyond there. Oh my God! Caused him pain. Calm down, Elbetta. But Lord I It's fine. Aside from the surprising weakness of the angels, everything is going exactly as I had foreseen it. Yeah, it's I was expecting time. them to be strong. No despair. No despair. Oh, black hole, huh? Just gonna suck it into nothing? Yeah! That'll work! Oh, and it's nighttime now. Or it was. Even demons don't have this kind of power. Just who in the world are you? Einzel Gohm. In the past, there was no one alive who did not fear this name. Hey, what was that? It seems that someone was using reconnaissance magic to watch you from afar. I'm guessing the theocracy. But my defense barrier counteracted it, so I doubt they saw very much. My country was watching me. If that's mm. all you heard, it's time to end this. No, 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 please wait. What I the fuck? You, Sir I mean, Lord Ides, <laughs> you spare my life. <laughs> the rest of these men don't matter. Oh my god. Wow, the rest of these men don't matter. do whatever it takes to appease you. I think you're confused. What? Lord Ides has no need for sniveling lower life forms. Only me. Humans <laughs> like you should bow their heads and give thanks to him for ending their miserable lives. Jesus. You said me. Humans like me. What was it you said to Gazif? Cease your futile resistance and just lie down like a good dog. <laughs> That's not a good mercy. Only like death is painless. And not. What the fuck, that music transition. It's all happy now. I we wonder, murdered everyone, did I live yay! Did up to Alberto's expectations as the Lord of Nazarek? Or you didn't. So cool. Oh, yes, you did. such a badass. He is. Did you say something? Nothing, my lord. Nice. But if I may ask, that, that face why did was you adorable. save that human soldier? You even gave him that important relic. Actually, it was a gimmick item from a lottery machine. Nice. More importantly, you could have sent me to fight in your place. I am your shield. There was no need to personally yep. risk your life like that. I know your strength, Alberto, and I trust your devotion. I know her voice. However, until we know more about this world, we must proceed with the utmost caution. I almost Believe want to me, say Winter from Ruby, but I'm not sure. So you tested their power by using him as a pawn. Your use of humans is truly impeccable. Is she doing a different tone? Uh, however, I fail to see how taking that last angel's attack head on counted as caution. Is it's a bit. So? Watching you feel pain was more than I could bear. But I feel like if she come through started to talk a little more still, no uppity. Still, wants her true love to get hurt. Oh, right. Mm. Let's go home, Alberto. With yeah. pleasure, Lord I She she can't she can't she can't bear to watch you get hurt Everyone, even though she knew that I you were in no threat whatsoever. The tomb on my own. There will be time to fill you in on all that has happened. 
However, there is a more pressing matter I want to attend to. Okay. Greater break item. I have changed my name. From this day forward, I will be known as... I'm Zulgo. You shall call me I. If you Ains have it any is. objections, stand and voice them. We have heard your precious name, Lord, and devote ourselves to it with unwavering loyalty. Glory to Lord Ainz Ulgon! Very nice. Glory to Lord Ainz Ulgon! Of course. We give ourselves to you, utterly and without any hesitation, to the most powerful supreme being. Everyone in this world will know of your greatness and fear your undying wrath. Yep. Our king who Hell rules yeah. over all forever. Yep. Glory to the overlord. The to the uh, glory to the overlord, the supreme ruler of death. Make the name I nice. go an eternal legend. Across the land. Through the sky, yep. and over the sea. Yep. I will spread the name of Einzel Gone to every corner of this strange new world. If any of my friends have come here as well, they'll know they're not alone. And that's a me. that's a really that's honestly a really noble idea, though. Spread your name through all the world and make your name the name of the guild, so that if any of your old friends remain you'll find them don't want to cry Demand more than your soul, more than your sexual It's funny that the song, like the EV is literally just like the Yandere's love play. Which I mean that's Alberto in a nutshell, right? I could imagine that she's a very big waifu for obvious reasons for a lot of people. I mean, I really like her to be fair, but I, I have a, I have a thing for Yandere, as you guys know that, and that's pretty much what she is, more or less. Holy fuck! Okay, that was that was fun. That was fun. That was a good. I think that was a good stopping point too. Not um, good. Very very conclude. That felt like that felt like the end of a of a of a section of the story. Um. It felt like the end of the first part of the story, um, for sure. So I did really like that episode. That that was really nice. Um, probably the best episode so far. I said that about episode three as well, so that's a good sign. Uh, but episode four was quite good. I definitely enjoyed it a fair bit. Um, so what I liked about this, too, is by the end of episode four, Eins... It's nice to say that now. So, so now I know... By the end of the episode, he is just going to refer to himself as Ainz Ulgon, so Ainz is what I'll be referring to him as moving forward. I'm not, not saying I'll never, there might there might be a context where I call him a manga, but I'll know to call him Ainz moving forward. Um, that was a really cool episode because it gave us a circumstance and a scenario where he got to, again, learn a little bit more about what's going on with the politics of the world, but he reached the end goal of, he kind of solidified what his what he's going to do and has a, the most basic understanding of how he's going to do it, which is essentially he's going to make his name a legend in this world and everyone's going to... So everyone will know in this world the name Einzul Gon so that if any of his old friends are out there, they'll find him. And it makes a lot of sense and it's really cool. I really like that. It, 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 it gave us a concrete mission statement that will allow the rest of the series to flow behind that concrete mission statement. So we have a baseline for what all the events of the series will 
be built off of, and then we can branch off to all different types of storylines based on that baseline. So very nice to establish a, a somewhat of a unilateral direction that will allow for other directions within it, but it does give us a purpose to what we're doing, which uh, we didn't have up till this point, but I think that it's nice and solidified now that we have an objective and we have something that we're striving for moving forward, which I really like. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, definitely, definitely curious to see um, where this goes in the next set. What um, probably learning more about the world, potentially exploring some of it. Um, you're learning more about the, polit the the political situation in the world and how that's how Eins is and you know, the, the Guardians and everything's going to play into that. That should be really cool. And just how it's all put together is going to be something quite fun and interesting indeed. And I can't wait to see that. I'm sure we'll get a lot of that in the next set because we will be doing a big set in the next video. Um, so, yeah, it'll be really fun. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. But, uh, yeah. I definitely thought, um, I'll bet we got a bit of an idea, even though obviously on the scale that Ainz is on, um, the combat that the, um, I want to say, was it Slain, Slain, Sloan? No, it wasn't Sloan. Something like that. The something theocracy, uh, the Southern, um, nation, uh, their, uh, their, their, their magic, their com combatants were obviously shit. And uh, compared to Ainz. And because of that, Ainz horribly outclassed him. And that was even the, wor the, 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 um, even the, the strongest weapon they had, which was like considered a secret last resort trump card, was still terrible. So very interesting. I'm curious because obviously that's another gimmick that we're playing off of. Again, going back to the whole wish fulfillment fantasy kind of um, um, archetype of character. Ainz is already. OP like he's he, it's one of those scenarios where the protagonist is like the most OP potato presumably in the entire world and we'll see where they take that direction but we're certainly playing under at least for the most part a pretty limited lack of suspense and stress because Ainz is as far as we can tell at least is how the show is initially presenting it untouchable uh, but we'll see where that actually goes over time and if 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 the show um holds true to that narrative throughout its entire run or if things uh evolve in a direction that seems unlikely based on what we the little the limited knowledge we have of the universe at this point but you never know where it can go in the future so very excited to see how they manage that and how they manage to keep that fresh and interesting uh, throughout the story so that'll be really cool I'm sure but uh yeah this was a pretty good start to the show I kind of consider this the true start to the show obviously we got a little taste in episode one this was our first proper set we're gonna get a big taste in the next set and then the set after we'll just be done with the the first season so at that point we'll be we'll be through a fair bit of overlord but um this was our first real taste as to what the kind of day-to-day -day, episode by episode show is going to feel like and I definitely enjoyed it so far I think it's definitely given a vibe that I'm into and I definitely think that there's a lot of good that I saw there's certainly there's certainly there's certainly a lot of things obviously it's playing into a lot of uh cliches which is fine um animation is okay it's nothing special I've seen worse but it wasn't great I mean between the fact that ooh, there's a lot of CG but even the um the actual 2D animation was Okay, there was a few there was a few combat stuff that looked pretty good. Most of it looked okay. It was passable, so I'm not like it's not a big deal. I've like I said, I'm definitely seen worse, but I've also seen much better too. So nothing super impressive there. Soundtrack's pretty good. I do like the soundtrack. The OP and the ED are great, of course, but the OST has been decent so far. Again, nothing exceptional so far, at least in season one, but um the OP and ED are really good, so so it does have that going for it. So far, though, I think the biggest strength is that the characters are fun and engaging, and they make me want to watch the show, so that's good. I, I definitely 
am vibing with the characters again. So far, they feel pretty archetypal, but they're good archetypes. So it's like, yeah, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely very curious to see where the show goes. And I think it'll be interesting to see how Ainz and Alberto's dynamic evolves because obviously Alberto is going to simp for him the entire series I'd imagine but how that evolves is going to be quite interesting and and how Ainz evolves as a character is probably if we get into the deeper more you know psychological shit I think Ainz's evolution as a character and his evolution into becoming more of the overlord and again less and less human over time is probably the most interesting thing that I feel like on a, on a deeper level, the show can deal with, but I think I, I am curious to see how interesting, um, the narratives can get with the guardians with potentially, like I said, Albedo we'll see, but with, um, you know, with like Shaltir and with Demiurge and with the others, I'm curious to see how much depth, um, and build up they can get because they seem to be the primary characters. I mean, obviously we're going to have Ainz, then we have Albedo, but then the rest of them are probably going to be the other focused characters of the group. So I imagine that hopefully they'll um, all get their own uh, moments to shine and really uh, have their characters explored further because obviously they're NPCs that are no longer NPCs. And I'm curious to see... Um, you know, kind of more of what they're all about because we've seen their face value, but obviously now they're not just NPCs. So they're going to have more than just a face value to them. So it'll be interesting to see how that works and how that, how they layer that into the story. Um, and hopefully they, they end up being really interesting. Um, but yeah. I think that's all I have to say. It was a fun episode. It was a fun episode. Probably the best one so far. Like I said, we got some action. Uh, Ainz was laughing at how pathetic the uh, the angels were compared to you know the stuff that the, the the stuff that he dealt with in Idrisil. But he is still very interested to see similar uh, uh, magic to what he saw. You know, seeing the same spells that he saw in Idrisil and seeing that there's clearly a lot of crossover between this world and Idrisil when it comes to that stuff. So I like that. And that kind of increases the whole mystery arc, which is kind of the other overarching story that won't be a direct goal, but it's like, what's going on and why does this world have similarities to the world, the game world that I, that you know, Ainz, quote unquote, or <laughs> came from. So very curious to see how that all plays out and uh, how they do that. So definitely excited for that. But that was a really fun episode of Overlord, and I did enjoy the set a fair bit. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say for these three episodes of Overlord. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed the reaction to the episodes and like I said hope you guys enjoyed the reaction I felt like the episode 2 reaction was a little off like I felt like I didn't really say much there but probably just my imagination I don't know but whatever the case may be if you want to support the channel check out the patreon down below in the description discord server will be down there as well and anyways ladies and gentlemen boys and girls without any further ado it is time for me to bid you adieu Flame and Shark signing out. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastical day, and I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace. All right, I'm gonna just throw this on the end of the video. For whatever reason, even though I even brought it up at the beginning of the video, totally flew right out of my head that I had an end credit scene to check out. So a couple hours later, checking it out, Went through episode four, make sure, you know, I was kind of behind everything, but I'm at 2257, and we're just going to jump into this. I probably won't have much of anything to say, but this will just be a little bonus thing right on the end. Here we go. And immediately I do that, and I immediately realize that I have, did not set up my, uh, Jesus, okay, well. And the lights are flickering, too, so it's just all around sus, but boom. Demiurge, please tell everyone about your conversation with the Master. Okay. I was with Lord Ainz the first night we arrived in this world, and he told me this. The stars glitter like jewels. I was sent to this land to obtain those jewels for myself, along with every treasure that shines beneath them. Then, after a moment, I heard him say, 
The most enjoyable thing now might be taking over the world. Yes. <laughs> Let it be known nice. here and now that this is our final goal. As servants of the tomb of Nazarek, we will present this world yep. to Lord Ainz without fail. Of course. That's a good way to rally the troops, so to speak. Okay, that was a little... Okay, that was cool. Nothing else to say. That was cool. I uh, apologize for that. Mess up my boy. My boy, Kickass. He He even told me. And I even said it at the beginning of the video. That's the worst thing. Even at the beginning of the video, I knew that there was an end credit scene after episode four for whatever reason. And maybe, maybe that's a, maybe that's a good sign as to episode four because it was my favorite episode of the show so far. Totally flew the coop. I totally forgot about that. So, you know how it goes. Anyways, um, yeah, I already said what I had to say about the episode. That was just a nice little thing there. Uh, Demiurge, uh, relaying. What he heard from Ainz and, you know, and chance for um, Albedo as the leader of the group, essentially, to rally the troops. Like I said, even though even though nothing's really going on right now, it's still good to get that shit going for down the line. So, sorry about that. I'll probably edit something, probably just a little, like, text somewhere on the screen at the end of episode four saying that, hey, my reaction will be at the end, even though, again, it was barely anything um, but I, I still glad I saw that could have saved that for the next video, but I wanted to get that in there since I did remember like a, like an hour or two, I think mean, like two hours. Actually, no, I remembered, I took me like a couple hours to get, actually get around to recording this, but I, um, I did remember shortly after, um, cause I started editing the video right away and I was like, oh, I didn't react to the <laughs> credit scene. I was like, oh, well, I guess I gotta see what that is. And here we are. Anyways, you guys, I already gave you the intro of uh, the outro to this video. So I'm just going to say thanks for watching. Peace.